The iPod Touch 6th generation is officially dead, in a sense. It will be really completely dead come this September, when it will no longer be supported and won't update to iOS 13, but for now it is technically clinging to life on iOS 12, even though Apple is no longer selling it. Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91Tech, and today we're going to be going over the life and death of the iPod Touch 6th generation. <laughs> Before we get into this video, I just want to throw out the fact that you should really go follow me on social media at 91 underscore tech so that my ego can become slightly more inflated than it already is. The iPod Touch 6 was originally released back in the July of 2015 to almost no publicity. Apple just quietly replaced the fifth generation iPod, adding different color options as well as upgrading the camera and internal hardware. The iPod 6 was much better than the iPod 5, holding the A8 chipset, the same chip found in the iPhone 6, albeit slightly underclocked, as well as a single gigabyte of RAM. This was opposed to the A5 chipset and half a gigabyte of RAM that we had in the iPod Touch 5. That device by 2015 was already getting super slow, and with iOS 9 coming to it soon after, it became practically unusable. Battery life was garbage, as they had degraded over the years, and the 6th generation iPod Touch was a small but much needed upgrade. Unfortunately, the hardware hasn't held up terribly well, and the battery life is an issue that carried over from the previous generation. But that being said, the iPod Touch 6 still managed four full years of support all the way up to iOS 12, and it will continue to be on the latest version of iOS until this September. When iOS 13 comes out, it'll be officially dead, although it still will have a couple more years of app support. But Apple is no longer selling this iPod, and in fact have replaced it with the 7th generation iPod Touch, a device that is almost exactly the same but with the A10 Fusion chip. The lack of improvements is disappointing to me considering the iPod 6 was already feeling really stale, but the iPod Touch probably isn't Apple's best selling product out there, and they always could have just discontinued the line altogether, so at least they didn't do that. And there's still stuff to like with the new iPod, or the 6th generation iPod, depending on which way you look at it, such as the form factor. The form factor was introduced with the 5th generation iPod Touch, but the 6th didn't change anything, and it honestly didn't need to. It's impressively light and thin. The iPhone 6 hardware inside this tiny body was really cool back in 2015, and I'd honestly say it's still pretty impressive. I actually bought this iPod myself shortly after it came out 4 years ago, and used it for a fair while before actually upgrading to the iPhone 6. I liked it. It was small, but at that time, this wasn't so unusual, with the iPhone 5s not even two years old yet. I think the iPod 6 did not need a huge refresh over the iPod 5. That form factor was still great, and there really wasn't too much to complain about, except for maybe the terribly slow speeds on the iPod 5. But with the iPod 7 coming out, I am, again, a bit disappointed with what Apple's done with the entire iPod line, although at least they didn't kill it off altogether. That being said, all iPods except for the iPod 7 are gone. And again, and the iPod 7 is hardly better than the 6, being exactly the same except for with the A10 Fusion chip and 2 gigs of RAM. For 200 bucks, it's hard to argue with, but it's still the same device from 7 years ago on the surface. Apple could have at least given it Touch ID, in my opinion, but they wanted to keep costs down all across the board, both for consumers as well as themselves. iPods must still be selling, or Apple wouldn't keep them around. Even if they aren't selling particularly well, they're obviously making money. These iPods are cheap to produce, and therefore economically smart to maintain but not actually improve. Yeah, the A10 chip is better than the A8, but Apple waited until the last possible moment to make that upgrade, with the 6th gen iPod not receiving support with the iOS 13 update. I feel bad for anyone who bought one of these iPods this year. You could say they should have done their research or whatever, but I mean, most people don't know the difference between an A8 chip and whatever is in the new iPhone. If Apple has it on their site, the consumer will assume it's fine, see the $200 price tag, and buy it. Apple really should have replaced the iPods last summer, but they didn't. And sure, there's nothing we can do about it, but that doesn't mean I can't be a little bit disappointed by their choices. The iPod Touch 6 had a very anticlimactic life, and it didn't really serve much purpose except for a niche group of consumers. This group mainly consists of young kids and people who just want a device for music. And hey, for just music, the iPod 6 actually serves its purpose. Or at least it would if the battery lived more than two hours. It's not that bad for everyone, but considering the iPod's main purpose used to be for music, you think Apple would stick a better 
battery in these things. Yeah, when you first buy it, it's not too bad, but they degrade fairly quickly, and most people's iPod 6s from 2015 don't exactly hold a charge very well. I know mine sure doesn't, but I'm not just doing this video to trash the battery and the iPod in general. So far, I'm mostly expressing disappointment, but there are still positives with the iPod, namely being that it's the cheapest way to get an iOS device, and it has been for a very long time. It's perfect for a kid that is too young for a phone, but too old for nothing. You have access to iMessage, which is great especially for families, it can play most games, and it's really not a bad device, just not a great one. The iPod Touch 6 has always performed fairly well on each iOS version, maybe not great on iOS 11, but on iOS 12 it's fairly fast, and while it won't be getting the iOS 13 update, it actually feels fairly good, considering this is the last version of software it'll ever run. It definitely fared a lot better than the iPod Touch 5, which if you remember, stopped on iOS 9, and like the iPhone 4S with the same hardware, didn't exactly do well. The iPod Touch 5 is almost impossible to use nowadays because it is unbelievably slow. If you have one, trust me, pull it out, fully update it, or even better, don't fully update it, and try using it, because it's terrible. The iPod 6 didn't suffer these issues, it's been fairly consistently decent throughout its life. I think the most sad thing about the iPod Touch 6 is that it won't be remembered for anything except being a minor upgrade to the iPod 5, and the iPod 7 will definitely be even less memorable. Apple might be maintaining the iPod line for now, but don't be fooled. The iPod as we knew it years ago is dead. There are no devices made purely for holding music anymore, and don't let the iPod touch fool you into thinking that it's really an iPod, at least as we used to know it. Not that it doesn't work for music, but we've moved on from the iPod era. And I mean, is that a bad thing? My rose-tinted glasses want to say yes, but the truth is probably not. Spotify and Apple Music is making accessing music easier than ever, and it beats locally hosting music on an offline device like an iPod. But perhaps I'm getting off track. The iPod Touch 6, for what it was, was a decent device. It served its purpose well enough, and while Apple waited too long to replace it, you can't fault the device for that. I own this iPod, I have a lot of fond memories with it, but I'm not terribly sorry to say that we're at the end of its life. Could they have done it better? Absolutely. But they also could have done it a lot worse. And I think that's where I'm going to end this video today. Hopefully I didn't come off too rambly. I mostly want to draw attention to the fact that the iPod 6 has been replaced and won't be fully updatable come this September, despite being sold on Apple's website, brand new, only a month ago. If you found this video interesting, maybe hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at 91 underscore tech if you want to be a spectacular person. And with that all being said, I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time time.